Transmission and Distribution Systems Part 2D Transmission Line Parameters Capacitance In this video, we will be discussing the capacitance in single phase line and three phase transmission line with equal spacing. In the previous part, we discussed transmission line models and representations. Just to give you a glimpse, what ahead is transmission line parameters induction admittance conductance part 2e, and then transmission line parameters impedance part 2f. In this part, we will be discussing one of the parameters of transmission line known as capacitance. Let's start by discussing capacitance and its effect on the power system. Capacitance is basically due to the potential difference between current carrying conductors. The higher the voltage, higher is the capacitance. Capacitive reactance is inversely proportional to capacitance due to potential difference between live wires. They act as plates of a capacitor. Moving on, we have the formulae of capacitance. C is equal to Q over V. C is the capacitance of the capacitor. Q is the charge stored on the capacitor, and V is the potential difference across the capacitor. As we discussed in part 2C, the effect of capacitance is negligible in short transmission lines because of low voltage rating. But as we move towards medium length transmission lines, the effect of capacitance can no longer be ignored due to high voltages. Hello everyone, Abdurrahman here from Alumiax Engineering. To learn more and to continue sharpening your technical skills, visit our website at alumiax.com learn. Capacitance causes the charging current to flow between the conductors. And since capacitance is a shunt between conductors, charging current flows in a transmission line even when it is open circuited. Therefore, it affects the voltage drop efficiency and power factor of the power systems. First, we talk about capacitance of a two-wire line. The capacitance between the conductors of a two-wire line is defined as the charge on the conductors per unit potential difference between them. The capacitance here is calculated as per unit length. That's why it has a unit farad per meter. To find the capacitance first, we must find the expression for the potential difference between the two conductors. Potential difference for a single conductor, the electric field intensity of single conductor can be written as E is equal to minus Q over 2 times pi times X times K. It is to be noted that all the quantities are taken as per unit length, which means the unit for Q is coulombs per meter, not coulombs, and so does the capacitance. Now to find the potential difference, or the voltage drop, we have to integrate the electric field intensity of charge Q over the two points P1 and P2, having distances D1 and D2 between which the potential difference is to be determined. As you're watching this video, we hope you find it useful and engaging. General Pat creates video tutorials so people like you can learn about power systems easily and efficiently. So become our patron, get exclusive perks, and we can't wait to see you on the other side. V12 is equal to integral from D1 to D2 of ADX. After putting the value of E in the equation, it becomes integral from D1 to D2 of Q over 2 times pi times K times X DX. On solving the integral, the final equation comes out as Q over 2 times pi times K into natural log of D2 over D1 with unit volts. Now we know the voltage drop Due to a single conductor, we can easily determine the total voltage drops due to both the conductors A and B having charges QA and QB respectively by the principle of superposition, which is to sum all the voltage drops to get the resultant. The equation for voltage comes out as VAB. The values of RA and RB are both equal to the radius of the wire, which is denoted as R. And since QA is equal to minus QB for a two-wire line, after some substitutions and simplifications, we get this VAB equal to QA over 2 times pi times K bracket open natural log of D over R minus natural log of R over D bracket close. After further solving, we get VAB equal to QA over 2 times pi times K into natural log of D square over R. As we have calculated the value of capacitance, 
charge, and voltage, we can put the value of QA and VAB for finding capacitance CAB as CAB equal to QA over VAB. On putting the value of VAB, CAB becomes pi times K over natural log of D over R. Moving on to the capacitance of three-phase line with equal spacing, three identical conductors of a radius R of a three-phase line with equal spacing are shown in the figure. Like in the previous case for two-wire line, we can determine V, A, B by superposition. The only difference in this case is that there is a third conductor which is at same distance from both A and B. The expression for the voltage from A to B can be written as Similarly, for VAC the expression will be On adding both the voltages, we will get the following expression. On further solving the equation we get, we take the phasor diagram and draw phasors VAN, VBN, and VCN. We know that VAB is equal to VAN minus VBN, and VAC is equal to VAN minus VCN. Both are at 30 degrees from the VAN, and on adding both the resultant VAB and VAC will be actually equals to the 3 VAN. So, the line to neutral voltage can be written as VAN is equal to QA over 2 times pi times K bracket open natural log of D over R bracket close. Now, since capacitance to neutral is the ration of the charge on a conductor to the voltage between the conductor and neutral, substituting VAN, we will get the capacitance to neutral for three phase system with equal spacing, that is, CAN equal to two times P times K over natural log of D over R. It is to be noted that the capacitance to neutral for single phase system or three phase system with equilateral spacing are same. We hope that you have a continued interest in this topic and in this series as either a student or a professional.